I will leave the floor for uh, to Paul first uh, to walk us through the plan for today. Yeah. So um, we're going to have a usual uh, Q and A for the first thirty minutes. Um, so I'm just uh, pre-weighing out some beans right now. Um, but after our general Q and A, we'll um, go into straight nine bar um, extractions, but with pre-infusion. Um, so we'll be uh, discussing some aspects of pre-infusion in terms of uh, how it affects your uh, dose, um, what sort of pre-infusion you should be using according to your roast, and um, I guess what, what effect it will have in, in, in your final cut. So um, we'll have uh, quite a bit of uh, content to go through today, but as with all our Zooms, we'll um, welcome anyone who wants to come on camera to show um, what they're trying out or maybe has want, we're willing to have some feedback directly from us. So, um, so while I'm preparing this, um, if anyone does have any questions uh, straight off the bat, it doesn't have to be about this topic, could be anything in general towards Decent, um, fire away in the chat's comments and um, Mohammed will pick them up and, and bring them forth to the, to the conversation. Yep, you guys can also always just raise your hands and then take the microphone if you don't want to type. Uh, that's also totally cool and actually quite welcome because I like to hear people. Yep. So I will be pulling quite a few shots today, so I am uh, pre-weighing uh, a few shots to, to make sure we, we get uh, what we want to discuss in, in the Zoom. Um, but uh, we will be darting to and from the graphs as well um, to look at what we what key points to look at in terms of is your pre-infusion going to be effective to what you can do to uh, make it more in line to achieve a good pre-infusion. Okay. Are we still with the Yunnan uh, beans? No, no, today I'm going with fine print beans. Um, I wanted to do something a little bit not as dark this week um, because we are using pre-infusion. Um, I think the darker beans were more in line with what we were using without pre-infusion. Um, and as mentioned, it's, it's uh, a no pre-infusion shot is useful for quite heavily darkly roasted beans or beans that are starting to uh, almost become stale. So uh, so this week we're going through pre-infusion in how it will be useful for you. Um, the main reasons are uh, obviously it will reduce your levels of channeling to increase your extraction uh, in terms of efficiency. But it also, uh, we all know that channeling will give you flavors that you don't necessarily want in your cup. So um, when we will be pulling the shots, we'll have a discussion to see, again, like um, how the pre-infusion went and, and what we can do to, to, to improve that. So once we get a few shots, we'll, you'll, you'll have a more clear idea what, what we're, we're talking about. Um, we'll refer to mainly the uh, flow rate in milliliters per second, and also we will be connecting the decent scale to gain the volume in cup, uh, which will uh, give you a lot of insight in what is essentially happening in the group head here. Um, so what is pre-infusion? Um, while we're still waiting for questions, I'll just briefly explain what is pre-infusion. So pre-infusion is the pre-wetting of grounds um, before you applying the desired pressure. Um, so desired pressure meaning if it's uh, if there's a nine bar uh, shot, then oh, the pre-infusion will in, uh, in its entirety be just before the rise in pressure. And um, you will know if your pre-infusion is successful because your input in terms of uh, flows per uh, milliliters per second will match the output coming out of the group head. So um, meaning that the saturation point of the grounds in the group head has, 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 uh, has, has been succeeded and uh, the water going in is, is, is essentially the water coming out as well. But we can see this more clearly on the graph. Um, so let's get start pulling a shot and, and have a look at what I'm referring to on the graph. So uh, as I'm mentioned before... I'm just going to yeah. stop you there, Paul, for a sure. second. Um, I don't know if everyone here is already a decent um, user. Okay. So I'm going to just um, restate what you just said for people who aren't. Sure. Um, because before decent... Pre-infusion wasn't very well defined. I would say I would just define pre-infusion as putting water on the puck before you make your espresso. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Right. And it's very vague. Yes. How much water, how much time, all kind of vague. And lots of companies did 
different things. Now, um, the descent does pre-infusion a bit differently. So I try to standardize what other companies are doing. Right. Okay. So when other companies talk about pre-infusion, they're usually talking about one of a few different things. The most common one would be the machine is plumbed in mm -hmm. and it's water coming in at whatever the line pressure is of your town yeah. and going on the puck for some amount of seconds. So it's in other words, it's espresso without the pump turned on. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's that's kind of that's what most machines mean by pre-infusion. Um, there are some exceptions. Um, there are some machines that have control over the flow during pre-infusion, such as mm -hmm. Slayer. Essentially, has espresso goes this way, pre-infusion goes this way, and the pre-infusion's got a little knob for controlling the speed. Um, there is one other case, like Sinezo, for example, where they essentially run the pump slower at a set speed. Uh, and they say pre-infusion is essentially a lower pressure. So, for example, um, Sinezo pre-infusion was at three bar. Mm -hmm. And what three bar means to a Sinezo machine is some amount of flow rate that causes three bar of pressure through the, through their flow constrictor. And we don't really know what that is, Yeah. right? We, we don't know what, what flow rate that is. But the vast majority of machines that talk about a pre-infusion rate talk about pressure. Right. And and that can be a bit confusing. And, and the reason I want to mention it's confusing because you're going to undoubtedly talk about it is that when you have a puck and you put water on it, there's no pressure initially. It's a sponge. Yes, yes. So those other machines, when they're talking about pressure, they're talking about pressure measured at the pump. The DU1, when it talks about pre-infusion pressure, what it means is water's gone on the puck, saturated it, and we're still maintaining a little bit of pressure mm -hmm. on it. Um, and I think like a machine like Sinezo probably does both, right? It starts off with three mils of water through its flow constrictor, and yeah. then when the puck gets saturated, then there's three three bars against sorry, three bars against the flow constrictor, then three bars against the puck. Mm -hmm. um, which probably makes great coffee. So I don't want to ding it. But I just want to make it clear that when we talk about pre-infusion on the D1, um, all it is is a flow step. It's a flow controlled step. Right. That that's all. And um, and then after the flow controlled step, your espresso happens. Yeah, yeah. That, so that that that's all. And um, the reason I mention it is that when I first designed the Wizards uh, to do pre-infusion, I had this idea, which that pre-infusion would always end when the puck resists water, when it's when it's when it's saturated. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in the five years since we've had the D one, I wouldn't say it's the case. I, I would say that I no longer think of pre-infusion that way. People have made recipes that take pre-infusion far beyond that. And what they do is they, now pre-infusion can be wet the puck, it's fully saturated, and then wait 40 seconds for a bloom. Or keep applying some pressure so that the water spreads around the puck quickly, mm. like the Londinium or the adaptive pro profile does. Uh, so I would say pre-infusion now, as I would define it, is everything that happens before the puck starts giving out proper espresso. Right, yes. That's pretty vague, but it, uh, it encompasses a vast amount of different behaviors that we now do to handle yeah. light to dark roast. I, are people cool with that? Um, I don't know if the chat has anything. No, the chat has nothing, which is fine. I'm going to give it back to Paul. Sure. I just wanted to, to make sure that when we talk about um, this stuff today, that we make sure that we don't go too deep into the language that decent people tend to acquire by virtue of having this tool. Um, when you buy your decent, you're going to come to it not knowing any of this stuff. But um, it's something we encounter as people go on diaspora and they're like, oh my God, these words, I don't know any of these words. What does this mean? A year later, they'll know them. But on this video, I'm sh on this call, I'm sure there's some people who don't know any of these words. Right? Yes, Just yeah. talking about pre-infusion flow rate, pressure, exit, what? Okay. Yeah. 
that's very true. And and um, I, I guess is 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 um, John brings up a very good point in that um, there are so many different definitions of it, and 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 John is very correctly into sort of grounding me a little bit. Um, I just give you a bit of background. Like last two nights, I, I I've literally been going through a lot of different pre infusions and how people do it, and obviously the the decent can can be flexible enough to to perform these different acts. Um, but what was uh, definitely uh, um, challenging for myself, for sure, was is understanding, you know, was it the hardware that is making that these pre-infusions uh, were so different uh, and, and really trying to understand how I was going to apply it onto the decent. Um, but and I guess what John is saying is uh, we, we don't want to confuse new users in, in, in all this terminology. Um, but I guess that also brings us to a good, great point with the decent in that um, these terminologies and things are, are, are used to describe these presets and, and different uh, ways of pre-infusion. Um, but what is important is, is, is um, I guess, how it is uh, achieved uh, within the D1, which is mainly through flow, which is what John was saying. Um, now, I, I guess um, with all these different definitions of pre-infusion, the main thing we can take from this is um, it is it is uh, essentially just a stage before uh, extraction uh, begins, and I think that's what we want to be clear on. In that, you know, there can be we can go really deep on all this, but essentially, it's just the first stage, uh, and it will maximize your uh, well. Uh, uh, increase your uh, well, let's say decrease the risk of uh, channeling, um, <laughs> and 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 hopefully give you a, a decent shot that you can work from or or drink straight away. Um, so you know, pre infusion can be as complicated as you want it to be if you really want to fine tune. Um, but you know, you can just get away with a a a, a good pre infusion. And not have to worry about, oh, have I done this 100% uh, correctly, or or this and that forth. Okay, so um, um, just yeah, just uh, up there. I have a comment from uh, Mohammed Al Artebi. Yep. Say, <laughs> it's a pretty cool comment actually. You need a pump engineer to understand the concept without graphs to tell you what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I, I I wanted to just add, um, why do we even talk about? Why are we so obsessed? With infusion and really it comes down to two things um first channeling or pucks that goes there are probably the main cause of bad coffee out there right? you go to a cafe and you can see it spurting that's why people don't use bottomless porter filters because as soon as they do they complain they make a mess because their coffee is channeling so um a good pre-infusion and, and i realized that five years ago um helps prevent channeling but there's another reason i didn't realize five years ago which is pre-infusion has turned out to be the key in unlocking medium to ultralight roasts. That it's, it's the main thing. And it wasn't until Rayo invented the blooming where he just messed with everyone's idea of what pre-infusion should be uh, that we started to make light roasts really well. Really well. So pre-infusion is a term we haven't heard really focused mm -hmm. on when the world was focused on dark roasts. Um, and Italy was focused on dark roasts and they didn't need it so much. They didn't have channeling and, Pre-infusion doesn't help dark roast much. Um, so that's why we're so focused. And, and Paul is more of a medium to light guy. He's probably more on the light side. <laughs> um, and, and so pre-infusion is something that he really focuses on to avoid the channeling that light roasts tend to have. And also to deal with the fact that light roasts um, are less soluble. So they need more water contact time. And that's where pre-infusion really helps <laughs> okay so um, we will be making some shots today and um, I have chosen just the uh, normal classic Italian espresso preset just to work with um, I've not messed around with anything so far um, but I think this will give um, a good insight into um, how pre-infusion works uh, and especially on the decent because it is uh, flow based and it does have a low pre-infusion in terms of uh, uh, the milliliters per second. But what does essentially um, these flow rates tell us um, what is happening inside? It, 
And why do we use such a low flow rate in terms of on this preset? Um, now because this preset is is um, using a nine bar um, extraction in terms of its desired pressure, um, it is it is the highest pressure that you could use successfully in in getting a, a, a decent shot. Now to maximize the uh, uh, your efficiency in terms of less channeling, um, if we utilize a low uh, input of uh, water in terms of milliliters per second. We find that um, it slowly pre uh, pre wets the ground sufficiently, uh, but also in that the 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 speed at which the water goes in um, will not sort of um, affect the all the hard work that you've used in in preparing the puck. So one uh, uh, we can use the lower flow rate in pre infusion to help with the puck integrity, and we can either change the amount going in with the time. Um, so on this preset. It is actually eight seconds going in at uh, four and a half milliliters per second. And um, it has a uh, exiting of bars at four bars. Okay. Now, four bars is a very interesting um, uh, uh, parameter to have in that we've, we have noticed that pre infusion will essentially end uh, when, the, uh, when the puck reaches four bar. Um, so when we when it does reach four bar, we are pretty certain that the, all the grounds are uh, essentially wet, and we can move on to the next phase, which is the rise and hold phase. Um, the rise and hold phase at the moment has the limited flow um, meter on top, but um, for the sake of this zoom, I'm just going to take it off because I don't want to go too much into the limit flow this this session. Um, but if anyone does have any questions on it, I will answer them. Uh, the reason I don't want this on here is because um, I want to show um, if it does happen on camera, I want to show what would happen if pre-infusion um, has not finished completely or has finished early. Um, so depending on how this shot goes will will uh, will depend on the feedback I give. But if, let's say for example, um, the pre-infusion has not been fully successful, what would happen in terms of um, in your rise and hold phase and how would that affect your general uh, flavor and cup? So if we have, uh, let's say your pre-wedding is not being completed, um, essentially you will have uh, dry spots inside your, um, inside your uh, group head and those dry spots essentially, um, they will get extracted. And when you have under extracted parts of the puck, you're going to have over extracted parts uh, because the water is essentially going around the dry spots trying to find the easiest way to go down. So what you will find during the rise and hold phase during there is either um, you may get a blip um, or you may get a very low flow rate coming out as it is trying to push around those dry spots. Now already we can see or already we can logically assume that if you are having dry spots and restrictions in your group head, um, you're not um, e efficiently extracting uh, from all the grounds in the coffee. You're, uh, as mentioned before, you're over extracting on points that are going around the dry spots and the dry spots are essentially not, not getting extracted at all. Um, the, the resulting cup will be what I call um, a confused cup where you will get over and under extracted flavors in there. Um, so maybe to the untrained palate, they may think, oh yeah, it's quite balanced, it's got a bit of bitter, a bit of sour, um, but in all essence, it could have been improved. Um, you will most likely find in those shots that you will get quite a balance of flavors, but the aftertaste is generally a little bit uncomfortable um, or um, dry on the palate, okay? Um, and in terms of when I assess espresso, um, I, I put, uh, uh, I favor the aftertaste parts, uh, but obviously me preferring light roast, you know, the body was going thinner, so the, 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 the chance of the aftertaste going uh, not so pleasant is, is a lot higher. So if you do tend to find shots uh, are, are tasting like that, especially in terms of the uh, aftertaste or the, the latter part of your uh, uh, flavors, then it's most likely something to do with your pre-infusion step. 
uh, not being fully successful. Okay, so let's pull a shot now and see yeah. see what we can get. A couple of things. Uh, one, if you can uh, maybe move your camera on the decent um, to show the tablet and maybe more of like a front view because it's a side view right now. So I'm not sure how much uh, we're seeing on the uh, on the decent camera. Sure, um, I can do that. Yeah. Um, uh, let me just prepare the puck and all that first because I don't have a jerry rig to set up on the tablet. But for the Zoom um, videos, we will include the screenshots of the tablet so it's easier. But I do understand people do want to see the uh, profile that I have set up on the tablet. So I'll just yeah. bring it up now. So this is just the classic uh, Italian um, uh, classic Italian uh, 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 preset. But I haven't changed anything. Okay, so if they want to view the settings, they and they have the D one in front of them, um, they can have a look. But I guess this is for people who don't have one. Um, we do have the software available on our website, um, which they can download and test out their user interface, uh, either on their uh, normal desktop or their tablet. Um, and it is quite cool to see if you if you really thinking about pulling the trigger on the DE1, you can have a check out the, uh, the uh, software that comes included. Okay, so I'm just gonna put the camera down now and do a little bit of prep work. So I'll hold the camera up during the um, extraction phase. Okay. Okay, so, uh, maybe John can pick up this question. Yep. So we have a follow up from uh, Doc J. He said, maybe we can talk a little bit about the puck resistance graph. I know it's calculated, I would like to know if it's something you use, and if so, if, if is there an optimal resistance curve, what do you consider the resistance graph to be too high, or when do you, rather? Okay, um, some very good questions there, and um, I guess the easiest way to explain some of that stuff is, is, is through a shot. So let's take a shot, and we'll zoom in on the graph, and we'll have a look at the puck resistance curve as well. And um, we'll we'll look into answering some of those questions for you. But um, some very good questions there. I like that. Um, so um, I'm starting with a, a 15 gram basket today with um, 15 grams only in terms of uh, dosing. So just 15 gram baskets, 15 grams in. And my setting on the niche today is. About 17, just under 17. Okay, now you're, if you, even if you do have a niche, it will be slightly different, um, but kind of gives you a good reference point. If you saw last week on my uh, zooms on V60s, it was all the way at 43, and now my espresso grind is at 17. Okay. All right, in the meantime, if you guys, uh, anyone's listening, has uh, more questions, you can just type them and then we can get them one by one uh, while Paul is prepping his shot. Okay. So, um, while he's prepping, I'll just say um, I, I don't have a, an answer on the resistance chart. It's an interesting measurement, and we don't really understand it well enough yet to give you feedback as to what peak resistance would be, um, what would be best. But it can be helpful to see when you've got pressure and flow changing, how much your puck is holding up. Um, if you just have pressure going flat, well, then you can see how your puck is holding up. It flows going faster. But if pressure is going down and flow is going up or down, it's kind of hard to see if the puck is, is doing okay. So because puck resistance is those two numbers, flow and pressure, uh, interrelated, multiplied, um, it can be useful. I don't use it much. Um, I don't know that anyone does yet, which is why it's been kind of toggleable on off. Okay. 
All right, so we're going to start the shot now. And, okay. So this is the uh, final heating to ensure we get a good stable temperature. And we'll kick in very shortly. bad for my first shot. I think I could have got a little bit finer. Um, I didn't quite reach up to pressure, but that's okay. Now, as we're looking at uh, pre-infusion today, I'm um, just going to take your focus onto this brown line. So this brown line represents the volume in cup, which is the essentially the amount of coffee into the cup. Okay, and the data is read by the decent scale. Okay, so as we can see, it started to um, have volume in the cup uh, around just after nine and a half seconds and we can see that is bang on in the middle of the rise and hold phase so it started to start uh, uh, ejecting coffee at around six and a half bars pressure okay and it was quite fast and we can see we've got a quite a fast flow rate going on so that definitely could be lowered down for this type of bean being a medium to medium light and if we just uh, had a little bit finer in terms of our grind setting, we probably would have reached a lower flow rate and reached our pressure as well. Now, in terms of uh, making sure that our pre-infusion um, is maximized, um, these two lines, the brown line and the uh, uh, blue line should essentially match up, okay? Um, so that the output of the uh, coffee coming out matches the input, okay? So we can see they're slightly out of line, um, now, this could be a, a calibration thing, but I calibrated it just yesterday in terms of the flow rate. Um, so I, I kind of quite familiar with how this should look, but it's not looking, okay? So what we are looking for is these two points to come very, very uh, close together as quickly as possible. And you will see that the brown line will essentially track the blue line, okay? So what adjustments are we going to make? We are going to make a slight increase in fineness in terms of the grinds to bring down the flow rate back down to around one, to maybe two, okay? And hopefully we will reach the uh, desired pressure for the shot. Now, we're going back to the question that was mentioned by uh, Dr. J in terms of the puck resistance line, okay? Um, what things can I tell from the puck resistance line? Um, a very obvious one would be channeling, okay? So if, let's say, the puck resistance started at the x-axis and then went all the way back down to the x-axis, what does that tell us? Uh, in this case, we don't have that, so that's a good, and it tells me that channeling didn't happen during this shot. But if we had lines like, let's say, for here, okay, and they went up and then immediately went back down to the x-axis, that essentially tells us that channeling occurred and water essentially gushed out of one hole, uh, the resistance went down, and then as that hole filled up, um, we would see the uh, puck resistant line go high up again, okay? But as we can see in this, we can see the puck resistance went up, and as the uh, rise and hold phase uh, came to an end and held the pressure along, we can see the puck resistance immediately dipped down, and started to have a decline into the uh, into a slow plateau okay now in my experience um, where does the puck resistance line uh, have a benefit um, it benefits a lot more darker roasts especially um, less so in light roasts but um, in dark roasts and um, when the line starts to plateau um, generally around this portion here uh, where the uh, the volume in cup and also the uh, flow starts to tear off, uh, starts to sort of plateau as well. I would look to begin to stop my extractions here. Now, maybe not in this case here, in this this extraction, because the pressure was not up. But let's say hypothetically, if the pressure did go all the way up and I was seeing this sort of 
yellow line trailing off and also seeing this being reflected in these two lines, the volume in cup and the flows per meter per second, then I would really look into stopping here. Now, why would I stop here and not it beyond 20 seconds? Um, it is purely for your personal taste. Uh, I prefer a little more cleaner flavors, so I will generally stop it a bit early. And if you stopped it here, you will find it is more of the uh, earthy, uh, heavier chocolate notes and spice. So if I, you like it a bit brighter, a bit more cleaner, stop it a bit earlier. But if you like that sort of full on earthy chocolate spicy taste um, in the darker roast, then then stop it at later on. OK, uh, but like as I mentioned, light roast, it, it's not as important to follow the put resistance line towards the end. Um, in light roast, you generally want to uh, want to get all that uh, sweetness and goodness from the light roast. OK. So I guess in short, um, put resistance is good for looking at channeling uh, and also very useful for darker roasts where you don't necessarily want the desired flavors towards the end of extraction. Okay, I hope that answered your question. Um, okay, so um, we'll make the changes right now. So I'm gonna make it a little bit finer over here. And hopefully we will see more of the uh, volume in cup line tracking the um, tracking the milliliters per second. So if only a very minute change, maybe half a notch, three quarters of a notch. But we'll see how that goes. Okay. So taste wise, it's been sat there for a little bit, but it's actually not bad. Um, I think um, when I'm going after this, um, I'm, uh, as mentioned before, the aftertaste of it um, is definitely a little bit drying. So um, it could be improved in terms of the aftertaste there. But uh, in all fairness, it's a very drinkable shot. Um, I'm definitely getting a lot of the uh, chocolatey flavors in the aftertaste uh, and a little bit of uh, a spice, which is for fine print, a little bit unusual. Usually you don't really get this spice. It's more kind of more earthy flavors. So that was quite pleasant. And I would suspect it's probably due to the lower pressure uh, from this shot. So that's a pretty good example of sometimes tasting your shots, but expecting it to be a bit more pleasant than it was. Um, and sometimes we get involved in all this theater of making sure that we're following the graph and, and things like that. But sometimes your accidental shots can be a nice pleasant surprise. So that was one of those surprises, which is kind of quite nice. Okay, so shot number two. I'm just gonna set this up. Okay. Uh, Paul, if you can please make me the host again because my sure. uh, Zoom tipped out for a second. No problem. Sorry. Where are you? Here's okay. okay. There you go. Cheers, thank you, sir. Okay. All right, so shot number two. So, um, I have changed my uh, puck prep a little bit today in that I'm doing an extra motion from the niche cup. Um, I, I would say you wouldn't have to do this extra step, but um, this is simply because of my workflow at the moment and the way I've got it all set up. Um, but normally I wouldn't necessarily put it in the niche cup, but I'm actually quite liking it today. It seems to be really homo homogenizing my uh, grounds. and. Because I'm using slightly darker coffee than I normally use, it's, it's getting rid of the clumps a little bit more. And um, I'm, I'm finding my, I'm, use, I'm using the puck rake a little bit less, so it's a little bit quicker in terms of prep. Um, but it was quite surprising because I'm actually adding an extra step in, putting it in the niche cup, giving it a shake, and then pouring it back into my portafilter. Um, 
but uh, I would say if this was a, a lot lighter coffee, I don't think I would be doing that. Okay, so um, what have I changed? I've changed the uh, grindness, so it should be a bit finer. I've not changed anything in pre-infusion, so let's see how this works. So in theory, this should be a bit better um, because there's more surface area in the ground and uh, they should absorb the coffee, uh, the water, uh, much faster. And you're doing the classic Italian espresso uh, for Pahal, yeah? Um, sorry, you'll have to say that again, the machine is running, you're a little bit quiet. Ah, uh, it's okay, I was just uh, confirming that you're uh, running the classic Italian espresso uh, Yes, profile. that's correct, yeah. Okay. All right, so um, seems like that grind change didn't do anything. So I'll go a little bit more. Hopefully. Okay, so what can I tell you from this graph compared to the last graph? Because it looks very similar. Um, repeatable shots. What a fantastic uh, um, <laughs> profile. I've essentially made two very similar graphs. And um, even even the puck resistance line is very similar, okay? Um, but it actually looks like I've got less pressure than I did in the last one, okay? So perhaps I didn't lean into my tamp a little bit, I'm not sure, or whether there was a little bit of channeling that wasn't registered or wasn't seen, but didn't look like it, there isn't much spray around the side. Um, so I'll put that up to uh, anonymous, Maybe I got a bit of defective bean in there, or I'm not sure. But sometimes that happens in coffee, don't worry about it. Uh, it does happen every now and again. And is, I guess, kind of why we love coffee, because there are so many variables, and there's so much to learn. Um, but we always seem to be learning with coffee, which is fantastic. Okay, so, um, so not much to say with that one. And... I've just realized in uh, in my embarrassment of making the same shot again, I haven't changed the setting on my grinder, so I've just chucked in an extra few doses of beans to see if I can get that extra bit of pressure, which is a handy technique to do, um, especially when you don't really want to play around with your beans um, all that much. Um, just sticking in a half a gram um, of beans in there can sometimes get you up to pressure. Um, and we'll save you a little bit of time sometimes. Okay. So back in here. So I guess some people who may be new to Decent um, may not have ever seen the puck resistance line before. Um, um, it's, it's, it's actually hidden in the graphs and you can only see it until you zoomed into the graph. So if you're wondering where the puck resistance line is, is, is on the graph, you do have to click onto the uh, graph itself and uh, zoom in onto it uh, before you can discover the yellow line which represents the puck resistance line. Okay, so shot number three, hopefully uh, that extra bit of coffee in there is um, giving me that extra bit of resistance to build up the pressure. Okay bad this time. I can hear the pumps kind of working a little bit more, so this is good. The flow coming out of the basket is nice and slow as we expect from a shot like this. And we can see how the resistance has gone on pretty crazy. Ah, and this is good for the put resistance line. I've actually got a bit of channeling over here. Okay, so as I was mentioning with channeling before, we can see that this is a representing a challenge. Okay, so um, oh, so if I look over here, 
you can see the uh, it's starting and then uh, it goes immediately back down to the x-axis before it starts again. So I have one, two, two instances of channeling before my actual extraction begins. Okay, and we can see that the, the line is actually trailing a lot below and my resistance is actually quite high throughout the shot. Um, I suspect this shot will be quite harsh to taste and even just by the look of the crema on the top, I can kind of tell, you, tell that it's going to be pretty heavy on the uh, on the notes, um, and even the smell. Oh, I don't have spoons here. Okay, let's just pour a little bit out here. Okay, so this went up to pressure, and it was the same. Um, um, uh, a grind setting but I tossed in about four or five beans extra on top which would be about half a gram. Now when you do add more coffee into your basket you will find that um, you, uh, uh, the room inside, the headspace inside will be a lot less and um, the in terms of efficiency of your extraction will be a lot uh, harder to do because you have more coffee inside. Okay, so this puck I can kind of uh, see that. Oh, hello. Yeah, just uh, just to, uh, so we would have missed a moment. There is a couple of comments as uh, you're working. Yeah. So one of them, someone was asking uh, about the puck resistance towards the end of the shot. Is that also considered channeling? Is that intended rather? And. Um, Someone else is asking a question. The yellow lines after the twentieth uh, second, the twenty-second mark, is that also considered a channeling or no? Ah, so as I mentioned um, uh, earlier, um, if the yellow line returns back to the x-axis, so returns back to zero, that is a clear-cut sign that it's channeling. So it, you can see it begin here, go up, and then all the way go back down. Okay, back down to zero. But if we look at these puck resistance line, they actually don't actually go all the way back down to zero. Okay, um, and this is a case is probably that the 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 pump is trying to stay at nine bar and it's going pop pop pop, and that's the resistance line you can see as the pump is going up higher and then it's releasing and then coffee is going down, so the, the the pump resistance is releasing again and then the pump goes up again and then down. So if we zoom in on here, if we can so here, okay. I don't think we can see it, but um, you should be able to see the pumps correlating with, with the up and down. And um, because it is so rhythmic, um, it's quite uh, uh, logical to assume that it is the uh, pumps uh, creating that extra bit of resistance uh, against the coffee bed, which is actually struggling to come out. Okay, um, you can, uh, The reason why I say it's struggling is because it, the, the flow rate started below one, uh, struggled for about eight seconds, and then as the coffee puck was releasing all its goodness, which was around here, uh, then the flow rate really quickened up. Okay, So that is a, a, a kind of a good little uh, trick or, well, insight into the puck resistance line. You will find that the, the puck resistance will be very high uh, at the start of the extractions. And as the more of the coffee solids start coming out, the resistance of the coffee puck will naturally also decline as it gives up those solubles. So um, how can I explain this a little bit differently is that uh, we may hear a lot of terminology about EY. So what is EY? It's expect expected yields. Um, so you may hear uh, numbers like 18-20%. Um, and that just refers that uh, to the 18 or 20% of solids from that puck. So we can say that 20% uh, or 18% of that puck has already been extracted and that's why we see the, the, the resist, puck resistance line decreasing as we were moving the solids, it's becoming less resistant uh, and, and this is represented in the graph here. So uh, I hope that kind of answered your question on how to identify the uh, channeling clearly uh, and also explaining why the, we have these sort of wavy lines towards the end. Okay. But that's, yep, uh, that's people a pretty cool question. That very good um, explanation, and it's very clear. Yeah. So all good. Thank you. Cool. Okay. So um, so I'm gonna still I'm still kind of finding my grind here, and um, 
We'll see if I just make another little adjustment on the grinder now, see if we can get a good shot, and then we'll look into see if I can play around with some of the settings to match these two lines even more. But um, some people may think that, oh, I could change the pre-infusion settings right now. Um, but the danger is that if you change your settings now when you haven't found your grind, is that you know you may find that when you're changing your pre your pre-infusion settings, uh, and then maybe your dose all of a sudden goes a bit less, then you'll find that your pre-infusion is not in line with what you want. Um, you've essentially changed your pre-infusion for a, 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 a higher grammage shot, and your your because your grinds are finer, it won't match what you're you're trying to achieve in your pre-infusion. So my advice is that. You find your grind first, as with uh, most people would advise you to do, before you change anything on your settings. Okay, uh, and this will save you a lot of headaches in in sort of frustration-wise in what may be going on or what may may you be doing wrong with your uh, uh, when you're finding your extractions or fine-tuning your profile. Sorry to say, it's a bit of a mouthful. Okay, so I've got one more shot pre-weighed out. I'm just going to quickly rinse this cup and hopefully this will come in. So this is shot number four. Uh, number two and three were very drinkable. Um, but if you really, you know, if you had a lot of beans about like over a kilo and you really wanted to fine tune this profile to your bean, um, I would actually put in the effort right now so you don't have to do it later on. Um, I've done this a few times where I've got a, a kilo of beans and I'm, I'm, I'm I've not put in the effort to do it at the start and I'm constantly changing it towards the end and I found that I've, I've changed it so much that I, I don't have any more beans left to play around with so it's much more satisfying to crack it at the start uh, and then it's it's almost a plug and play as you go just after that. Okay. So uh, I have changed the grind to a bit finer this time but it is still a 15 gram dose. Okay. And we um, it's quite interesting how a lot of people asked about the put resistance line. Um, it was probably one of the first data points that I was trying to understand. And I think John thought I was a little bit weird in trying to look at the put resistance line. And, and, and I remember him asking, what, I, what was I looking for with the put resistance line? And the only reason I picked up on that data point um, <laughs> was because it was something new. I hadn't seen it before, so I was really trying to understand why they, why they included it in there. Um, and yeah, the, 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 what I just mentioned before was what I found in, uh, it was useful for when I was trying out a new bean and I wanted to really, uh, stretch out the, uh, ratio. So I normally try it as a two to one ratio. Um, but if it is a, a lighter roast, I could really look at, uh, can I elongate it longer? Or if it is a more darker roast, how long can I push this extraction to really uh, get the most out of the bean? And 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 that's what it is all about. It's 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 really about getting the most out of your bean with referring to the put resistance line. Because um, you know if you're if you're let's say you're just used to pulling double ristretto's, um, some may find it's a little bit wasteful to be using a bean that you could extract for longer um, because it was roasted a little bit lighter. Okay, so here we go. I'll record it. Okay, so it is flowing a lot more easier this time. The pump doesn't sound like it's struggling. And the flow, wow. Okay, the flow is going pretty crazy. Almost four milliliters a second. Okay, right. So essentially, I am still under extracting. Okay, and the good thing is that my tracking of my line here 
before everything is going away is very close. Okay, so actually pre-infusion for this shot was a lot better. Okay, but um, I'm still fine if I my grind. And luckily I don't have any channeling during this shot. Okay, as we can see. Um, but I'm still failing to get up to pressure. All right, so I'm gonna do some, a little bit of drastic change here. And I'm wondering whether me leaving my beans out pre-weighed is affecting my grind setting. Um, so this time I will go one by one and see if I can pre-weigh less and hopefully reduce this variable out. Okay, so if I do f eventually find my grind, <laughs> um, what will I be looking into in terms of what could I change to potentially help my extraction or help pre-infusion? Now in terms of taste, um, I think we could go a little bit cleaner, but in terms of extractions, I think the extraction is looking pretty, pretty nice, um, but it's more about fine-tuning what I'm getting out of here. Okay. So I've got 14.9 here. I'm going to go another notch finer. Okay, I think we are there. Okay, so if I was to stop this now for my own personal sake, I would have stopped it about here. Okay, but it has gone on maybe another five seconds longer. Okay, we've stopped. Okay, so we've got a, a lovely mottling here, tiger striping, and let's do the taste. Now this shot did reach up to pressure and um, we can see the blue and brown line has tracked very closely, almost at the end of uh, uh, the rise and hold phase. So this tells me pre-infusion was very successful. Okay, And we have a, a little bit tailing off towards the end, but that's not really bothering me too much. Okay. Um, I could have a look at the calibration, but I think that's that's pretty pretty tight. And considering my previous extractions, where the flow was almost like, like let's take the last shot for example, was almost at four, and my volume uh, in cup was still around this. Um, I think this is pretty good. Um, the start of my extraction was just a little bit below one, but we quickly rose above one, and we can kind of see it plateau across. Um, no channeling here. Okay, and no channeling towards the end of the shot, and um, we did reach up to pressure. Okay, so this shot, um, for me, in terms of uh, the desired profile settings, as we reached my settings, grind settings on the niche is matching the dose and the basket I am using, and that essentially took five shots to get um, a very decent shot without tasting it. Um, but just from the smell right now. I can already tell from the smell that it's very rounded. Um, 
There are very uh, clear notes of uh, milk chocolate in there instead of baker's chocolate. So it tells me that this shot is going to be sweet. And there are lots of other flavors in there, but I won't go into it. And the shot is very smooth, very pleasant. And what I would be looking for in terms of uh, in, in this style of shot and this style of roast. So this was a 40 ml in the cup um, from 15 grams of coffee. So quite a long extraction. And in terms of clean cleanliness, it's pretty clean. Even though I would have stopped it a little bit earlier on, it's pretty clean. And um, that is part and due to the uh, how well the coffee is roasted and the quality of the coffee. But it is also uh, in part um, and how the, the Decent has done the pre-infusion as well. We can see that the pre-infusion matched very, very tightly at the start. And that essentially tells us that the coffee was extracted almost all at the same time um, as the flow input was matching the output. Okay, And we can see we have a nice little tail off as majority of the solubles is extracted out. Okay, so So again, so it's all about personal preference where you want to stop it. Um, but, you know, have a play around and, you know, use the puck resistance as a guide if you really want to. Um, okay, so uh, what can I change in terms of pre-infusion um, to make this better? Um, not that much from the, from the judging of this graph. And the reason I say that is because of the way the water came out from the start. Okay, but we can have a play around. So let's have a look into the parameters. All right. So we can see it came in for eight seconds, four and a half at four bar, all right? But let's say um, I wanted it a little bit brighter, okay? Let's say I wanted uh, to pull more acidity to uh, balance out the sweetness, okay? We could essentially just reduce the pre-infusion by two seconds to see what that did. But um, I would like to make aware that when you reduce the pre-infusion, um, you also have to be aware of your milliliters per second. If you change the pre-infusion, you essentially change the total amount of water being inputted before the extraction starts. So um, a good guideline on um, um, how much water uh, coffee, uh, how much water coffee would absorb, um, is you can use uh, one gram will absorb two milliliters of water. And generally, you will get uh, most pre-infusions using around just under an ounce, about 20 to 25 mLs. Um, but well, the danger is when you use less than that is that you will not pre you will not pre-wet the the entire grounds in the in the group head. Okay, so if you are reducing this level, uh, the seconds, you may have to change this setting here as well. Okay, but you might not have to. Okay, but for the sake of this, let's just change it now, uh, change the time and see if we can see if we need to change the MLLs per second. So let's just change it to four seconds and see what it happens. Okay, uh, most likely what we should expect is that the brown line will not appear until a little bit later on after the rise and hold phase. Okay. So uh, the very least will show you a, a, a graph representation of not enough pre-infusion or not enough water being entered into pre-infusion stage. Okay, so I'll go back to Wayne's and Beans and preparing the next shot. Um, did we have any questions just while I was talking there, uh, Mohammed? Uh, no, not really. We have feedback from people um, just cheering you on, saying this is very useful. Oh. We have Mark who had to dip out quite early, and he said he will uh, watch it later on uh, YouTube, but that's about it. So, yeah, you oh, can just keep great. going. Cool. Can I ask something? Yes. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Um, um, when you are using the um, resistance curve to cut your sh um, shot short yeah. uh, while doing darker roasts, you talked about um, you looked uh, at for something at the resistance curve to know when you have to stop the shot. Yes. I didn't get what you were looking for, sorry. Oh, it's okay. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll explain it again and then I'll point it out again in the next graph. Yeah. But you will see yeah, um, the uh, put resistance line uh, increase 
and then have a gradual uh, uh, decline. Okay, some some depending on the coffee where it's grown, where it's roasted, will have a different resistance line. Okay, um, but in general, they will follow a up up uh, an increase in put resistance, then a decrease. Okay. Now, during the decrease is when the coffee is extracting its solids, okay? Now, as it is starting to taper off and, and plateauing, so meaning it's flattening out, during the, the, the slow uh, decline here, during this phase, is when you can look to kind of really stop the shot. Um, why is the case uh, with dark, dark roast? It's because the majority of the solubles that you want has already been given out. Okay, so anything after that point of the desired flavors, um, you, you don't really want. So you can kind of cut it off after that. Um, so um, so the, the trend is as it's tailing off, we've got most of the stuff that we want from the dark roasts. But as it is plateauing, it is just giving off those, uh, uh, those roasty flavors that you don't want. So it may be char or maybe burnt or, you know, um, those sort of flavors. So. If you're practicing, just try it. Um, try cutting it off just before the shot ends and then tasting it. And then just you know, cut it off a little bit, uh, 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 maybe one or two, maybe three seconds earlier and, and taste it as you go along. And you will find that the, you, the, the, the different points you have, there will be one point which you will like more. Okay, uh, and, and essentially it's just trial and error and seeing which part you like. But um, what you will generally see is the, the more toasty flavors towards the end, okay? So if you don't like the toasty, roasty flavors, just cut it a little bit earlier. Um, and if it is again, you know, cut it a little bit earlier again, okay? But I'll show you again on the graph, all right? Thank okay. you. That's all right. Okay. Okay, so I'm going for the same uh, amount of coffee, 14.9 as last time. It seems to be a very successful shot, so don't change your scrimmage if you see something successful. We do want to repeat. Um, but in this time, we've, uh, as mentioned, we have changed the uh, pre-infusion in terms of seconds. So this was previously at, uh, I think it was eight. So now we just halved it and changed it to four. Okay. Uh, question for you, Paul, from yeah. Sasha. Uh -huh. He's saying, how would this look like for light rows? Because they fall apart easy uh, earlier and usually they need to be extracted longer as well. Is it the same principle? Uh, for light roast, ah, um, for light roast, it, it, the put resistance line at the end um, is not as important as it with dark roast because um, the light roast you you generally want to extract um, those those flavors at the end as well. Um, if we didn't, for example, um, the light roast coffee's shots will be very sour uh, and 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 you know. Uh, too acidic, so we want those uh, that volume at the end of the extraction to gain that sweetness and 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 uh, to balance out the shot. So um, I guess you could say it like this: the, we look at the put resistant line on light roast to ensure that we've got uh, a balanced shot. So um, it will tell you when not to uh, stop your shot too early. So, for example, if it is still on the decline and you wanted to stop, then you shouldn't stop because you know there is still more in the coffee that you can draw out or extract out, okay? So uh, for light roast, you would generally only extract out when it's plateaued and plateaued for a certain period of time. Um, where that time where you stop, it will be trial and error, similar to dark roast where you're tasting it. Um, and uh, for light roast, I guess it's, it's in terms of uh, concentration, in terms of how strong, uh, how concentrated the coffee is, not in terms of EY, but how uh, the perception of how strong the taste is. Um, uh, I don't know if I've explained that well very well. Um, uh, the, the perceived strength of the, of the beverage. So it's not to do with the EY and how much is included in the beverage. It's 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 how concentrated you 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 are feeling it is tasting. 
So um, the longer you draw out the shot, the less concentrated it will taste, uh, and you will find that the flavors will get you know dulled out eventually. So you want to find that point where it is still tasting very balanced, but you can still clearly differentiate all those flavors. Okay, you don't want to get that muddy, unclear, unclarity in in the flavors of light roast. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, one more for you. Yeah. Uh, Darren is asking. Uh, one of the earlier shots pulled the calculated puck resistance dropped to zero during pre-infusion. Yeah. And with Paul saying it was due to channeling. Uh -huh. If this was still in the pre-infusion stage, assuming it wasn't pre-infusion leaking, could the drop uh, in puck resistance just mean the puck had accepted a larger dose of water due to some reason? Um, I think you're uh, also correct in that it, it did accept a large amount of water, um, but the beauty of pre-infusion is that um, the channeling will self-heal. Um, in the pre-infusion stage. So that's why you get uh, multiple lines as the channeling is healed and then resistance is built back up. Um, but then you may have another channeling in a different area, so then the resistance drops. So um, that is one part of what is good about the Decent in that it will help heal some of those channelings and reduce those channelings for you. Um, but yeah, so he is correct, yes. Um, it, the puck did re accept a larger amount of water, uh, but that larger amount of water was, it, it was helping to uh, seal up the, the, the channeling that was caused. Okay, so if that kind of made sense. So the large water kind of made the channel, and then after that point, it, it self healed. <laughs> yeah, it's clear. Thanks, Paul. That's okay. All right. So four second pre-infused, half the amount of time. Okay, so it's struggling a little bit, and now it's getting off. Okay. Okay, so same setting in the grind, um, but the only thing we changed was the amount of time pre-infusion was activated for. So it was half the amount of time um, as the last shot. The last shot you could you could say was your uh, god reference shot, and this one um, we can analyze what was going on. So this point here, um, I can get my finger in. This point here is the ride and hold stage, and this point here was the pre-infusion stage. Okay, so as the rise and hold stage finished, there was no real registration of uh, volume in cup till I would say just under five seconds later. Okay, so um, yeah, so about five seconds. All right. Now, um, what this tells us is that the previous setting of eight seconds. Okay, which would have been about here. Okay, and then rise and hold would have been here. Now I don't know if anyone remembered last time, but the rise and hold was actually around here, and the pre-infusion here. So you can actually work out how much time uh, extra you will need um, in terms of pre-infusion just by looking at this graph. Okay, so let's say um, pre-infusion is at four seconds, which was here. If we doubled that at eight seconds, which would be here, 
Okay, rise and hold would actually happen here and the volume in cup would actually appear as we saw in the previous extraction. Okay, and that would have been ideal. All right, so this is uh, in testament to the DE1's presets in that, you know, every time we update, it updates to what we feel is the most uh, accurate representation or imitation of that preset or whatever it's trying to uh, achieve. But what is reassuring is that the pre-infusions have been fine-tuned for you, okay? Which is great. <laughs> all right, so if we reverted it back, we would find that all these um, pre-infusion stages or the rise and hold and pre-infusion stages would match this grind setting and this particular roast um, characteristics in terms of extraction. Now, it's really interesting to see that the flow rate also was below one as it was still trying to accept water uh, coming in from the rise and hold stage. So I guess it was struggling under the higher pressures, um, really trying to push it out. Um, you can see this in the pumps happening. And then as it started to give away its solubles, then it, the flow started really to come out and, and becoming more normal. So I would say this portion here to here would be a normal looking flow rate. This point to here to here was definitely struggling and here we can identify uh, uh, what was needed in terms of changing the preset uh, changing the pre-infusion uh, pre uh, to be more adequate adequate to this settings that we have here so that was pretty cool in that the findings we found was we need to revert back to what we had before okay um, but let's say we 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 wanted to stick to a shorter pre-infusion for some reason, and we wanted to play around. What could we do in terms of our settings in our uh, pre-infusion to kind of make sure this extraction is looking as if we should expect it to be? Okay, so let's have a look in here. So as I mentioned before, if you change your pre-infusion in seconds, you may have to change the, uh, the water, the amount of water going into the group head. So if we do a bit of math, so we can do four times four and a half, which is, will be just over 17 mL a second, just approximately off the top of my head. Okay, now that is, uh, so if we had eight second pre-infusion at four and a half, um, that is significantly less. So we have almost half as much water going in that we, we have identified that we need to. So we just need to do a bit of math and uh, basically get um, the amount from the previous setting that we need but in four seconds of time okay now I think the maximum uh, milliliters per second is eight okay or twelve or it goes to eight oh reverts back to twelve okay. uh, it will um, be main so if we did that that would be 36 mls okay but what was originally in our um, in our basket let's calculate now so it was eight seconds at four and a half so that was 36. Oh, okay. So if I put this to eight milliliters a second at four seconds, I will get the same amount of water entering, but in half the amount of time. Okay. Now, uh, the danger of putting twice as much water in half the amount of time um, is that your puck resistance could potentially be reduced. Potentially. Okay. Now, I say potentially because it will be mainly dependent on your puck prep, okay? Uh, but we're all human, um, you know, puck prep can be a bit of a chore uh, or a bit of a skill to hone, but even myself, I will have instances of channeling, but uh, the DE1 is here to help and will help you in getting a more, uh, uh, less frustrating experience, okay? So I'm just gonna prepare the next shot. Um, and as I've explained, uh, sorry, yep. Doc J is asking about your opinion on the hog or the poor Q press. I actually don't know what that is. Okay, um, they're essentially elaborate uh, puck presses, but in um, they're essentially on a, they're on a jig essentially, and it encompasses the porter filter, and uh, the jig ensures that it is in position um, every time you use it. And it, uh, the hog has um, a pattern of pins, 
um, that is essentially depressed into the puck before tamping. And this um, is meant to uh, create a even um, sort of spacing in between your grounds uh, and will help in terms of your uh, extractions. Okay, um, I've not personally tested them, but I have followed it very closely um, because some of the extractions that I've seen from the hog and the porky press have been uh, very beautiful. Um, you know, the, the 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 slow beading from the bottom, um, and a lot of them are using uh, fairly light roast, so it does help with your increasing your extraction yields. Um, so if you are using a light, lighter roast, it definitely helps in pulling more of those flavors that you want. Um, uh, I suspect that it, it may not be as beneficial with darker roast, but um, like I said, I haven't used it before, so it, 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 I don't really know. Um, but I suspect that um, you probably have to make some sort of adjustments in your recipe so you're not bringing out those roasty flavors because you're... Uh, maximizing your efficiency uh, with with using the porky press. Okay. okay. Well, one more for you. Uh, do you have a preferred exit flow rate when moving on from pre-infusion? Um, I think that's more um, to do with the type of roast I will have. So um, the darker the roast, the lower the flow rate will be coming out of uh, 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 coming out from pre-infusion. Um, so uh, darker roasts, you know, you can get a flow rate just below one, um, but then it will creep ab uh, above one, maybe not going above one and a half. Uh, medium to medium light, you can go from one all the way up to two and a half, maybe even three if it's medium light. Uh, and then lighter roast, you're really sort of going for the fast flow rates, three and three uh, milliliters per second and up. Um, take the Rau Alange, for example, with no pre-infusion, just go straight to four, four milliliters a second in flow rate. Um, and that is um, an extreme example of using light roast to get as much of the uh, solubles out of the light roast coffee as possible. So um, flow rate is very um, tied to the roast level of your bean. And um, you will find that... Uh, the better shots that you have um, will will be within those ranges uh, of what I've just mentioned. Uh, but it's a very good question. And um, if you're maybe not so familiar with uh, what the roast will look like in terms of using it on the preset, um, uh, you know, you can... You know, you can ask us directly or, you know, post a, a thing on Diaspora and ask for help there. Um, a lot of people will help you out on that. And is it, I think is in general is one of the, the main uh, learning points in, in coming on to the decent. Um, they find that um, they love one profile, uh, but maybe uh, will want to use that profile for everything. Um, and while some profiles may be able to do that in terms of different roast profiles, um, you will find that the more you like or chase a certain style, you'll find that the, it, it is only really matching with a certain, uh, certain degree of roasting. Um, so the profiles I'm using uh, in the, today and the and last week's Zoom uh, is more for your dark or medium, medium dark roasts. Um, today I'm using something a little bit lighter than normal uh, to try and uh, talk to the points on pre-infusion um, because it's 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 uh, and that's where it, it gets confusing. Um, if, uh, I, I think it's a good point to say this in that a lot of people have their own opinions on what dark, medium dark, medium light roast is. So even if you buy a bean that that uh, the roaster said is medium. Um, it could quite possibly be uh, a dark to someone or medium dark to someone else. So um, having your own benchmark in terms of what dark is or what medium is uh, will help you in finding uh, what those exit flow rates are. And um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's a tough one. Um, and it, it, the only way way I've really gone about it is just by taste. Um, so you know. 
so if I go back to these profiles, for example, um, these profiles are, as I've mentioned in some of my extractions, are below one ml, um, milliliters per second. And um, I'm, I'm saying these flow rates out to you guys so you can, you know, uh, get a, a, a key point to look out for. Um, and you will find that with other profiles like, um, like Lindinium as well, which is a little bit more advanced. Um, but the key points to look out for is in the dripping stage. Um, some people find it a little bit difficult to uh, find their grind with, a, with, a, with more, more advanced profiles. And so, you know, understanding the points which you look out for is very important. So, uh, yeah, so it's a very good question. Um, but yeah, it's more to do with roast profile uh, and the preset you are using. Okay. Um, so I've just seen another question here. Uh, right now, using a Profilificatech Pro 600 with flow control, very uh, motivated to join the team soon. Great incentives and communities. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, and that's what um, these zooms are about, and 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 is is learning from each other and. And you know, I myself haven't have used every piece of equipment, or may necessarily know all the theories involved in what what decent users are using. So yeah, the community is one of the great aspects of decent, and um, I think that's that's one of the key things in in how we've got so much innovation in terms of uh, new types of profiles that people have been using. Um, and a good example is in the light roast, where traditionally um, light roasts were were only for you know pour overs and 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 very skilled baristas on lever machines. Uh, but now we have the option to really play around with espresso on uh, light roasts. Um, and on the D1, it's 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 truly mind blowing. And having the community here to share that is is another thing altogether. So yeah. Uh, come join us. <laughs> All right. So um, let's go back to this profile. And um, so what I've changed is the milliliters per second. And I've got eight milliliters per second in four seconds. So the same amount of water going in, um, but in half the amount of time. So in theory... <laughs> in theory, we should see a very similar um, uh, extraction curve, but at just at different times in the extraction stages. So, um, so in the previous reference shot that we used, it was a eight-second uh, pre-infusion, uh, rise and hold, and then we saw our first um, voluming cut just after 10 seconds. So we should see a similar thing here with our pre-infusion with four seconds and then the rise and hold. Um, but we should see the voluming cut because of the reduced pre-infusion time to come in maybe three, uh, four seconds uh, earlier. Okay, so that's the prediction. Hopefully it will come out in uh, on the graph. But if not, I'm sure we'll have something to talk about in terms of what went wrong. But um, I think... If something does went go wrong, it will be more likely be my uh, my personal variance in myself being the the coffee preparer. Um, I think from the maths that hey, we've just uh, done. Paul, we need a spotlight on your decent one more. I lost the host status. Okay, that's okay. Um, so I'll make you host status again. That's okay. Uh, okay. All right, should be Thank there. You. Cool. Yeah. All right, so one last time. Okay. So same dose, fourteen point nine, and hopefully. We will get to what we described.
How are we doing for time? I mean, I haven't really checked the clock, actually. Uh, we are uh, at um, about oh. an hour and 25 minutes in. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. All right. Okay. I've run out of cups, Mohammed. <laughs> All right. Okay, apologies for the cup, but I've just quickly rinsed. <coughs> <laughs> All right. So, four seconds, twice the amount of water. Okay, it doesn't look bad. A little bit slow. Has come into play. All right. Okay. That was quite interesting. So, same amount of coffee, about 40 in, uh, 40 out, sorry, in cup. And we have a look into the graph. Okay. So, Rise and hold finished here, and we had water uh, volume in cup just about nine seconds in. Okay, so definitely an improvement from the last shot, um, but I think we could have gone a little bit better. Now, because there was a slight delay this time, um, I'd like to point out if anyone saw uh, how many coffee trails I had coming out of my basket. Okay. Now I had three coffee uh, 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 streams coming out of my uh, quarter filter head, uh, and that tells me um, that my cream fusion definitely didn't finish. Okay, or I have had um, slightly too much coffee in the coffee puck, and my expansion of my grounds was too much for my basket. But because I dosed 14.9 grams, and uh, I've had previous shots at that dosage which was successful, I think that's very unlikely. So my mindset right now is still going on to, okay, pre-infusion, um, I could have done better, okay? So again, um, I've not done uh, as well as the default uh, pre-infusion, but this was mainly an experiment to see what we could get out, okay? But the main difference is I've got a little bit of a spike here, okay? And uh, my peak resistance is about the same, but again, it's that delay here. Now that delay in your volume in cup, um, coming into your cup, um, it tells me one of two things, is that um, I've either got dry grounds at the bottom, okay, and they're not wet enough yet because of the shortened amount of time I had in pre-infusion. And those dry grounds are restricting the amount of holes in the basket that is, in, is able to put out coffee, okay? So essentially what this little blip is here, okay? That's my theory. I don't know if that's 100%, but that's my theory, okay? Now, if that sounds true and the dry spots are there reducing the holes, therefore you have a higher pressure inside your group head, okay? And this would sort of explain why you're having drips at certain points uh, while it's going around but it's not constant flow, okay? Now, if we had a constant flow, we would find that the milliliters per second would rise very quickly and become where we want it, much similar to the uh, reference shot we use where it did uh, actually dip below one, but only very slightly before it rose off and gave you a, uh, a as to expected curve. Now this curve here is a little bit below what we've had in the previous shot, so it's just gone on to two, okay? Um, but we want majority of the shot to be within, uh, between one and maybe two and a half or maybe three, okay? So this proportion here, where we have, let's say, one, two, maybe about seven seconds of our extraction could have been a lot better, 
Okay. Now, some people may uh, be thinking, well, that's seven seconds, seven seconds only of your extraction, but you had, let's say, almost 15 seconds of your extraction is good. Okay. But that seven seconds there has already um, gone into the cup. And um, essentially, your, what you could have drawn out in those seven seconds, you now lost the opportunity to. So this is where the sweetness in the cup will be the most different in terms of sweetness. And because your sweetness is less, because your flow rate was less, you will pick out a lot more of the uh, unwanted characteristics of this cup. So even though this shot may be tasty, it, you know, it will have a lot of flavor in there. Yeah. So it's not as comfortable to drink, okay? And that's what I'm trying to get at here, in that what you change in pre-infusion or how pre-infusion affects your extraction will affect you what is going into your cup, okay? Now, um, it's very similar in terms of what our reference shot was giving, but um, in terms of what a, uh, a barista with finesse will do with your shots, um, this is the difference what they're changing, okay? And, um, and it's great to see that the decent uh, within every update is making sure that you have uh, within your presets a, uh, a parameters that will uh, give you immediate satisfaction. Okay, so you don't need to play around with all these settings, but it is very useful for you to understand that uh, maybe you have a tricky bean and you want to change something or um, you're all of a sudden uh, got a slightly lighter roast than normal and you want to maximize that bean. Um, we don't want to waste beans, so this is you know, essentially a way to uh, uh, fine tune the profile that you may already enjoy, uh, but may not be working with this particular type of bean that you have. Okay, all right, so um, I'm quite happy with what I've shown today on these um, pre-infusion graphs. Um, if there is any questions uh, in regards to what I've explained today, um, feel free to ask me now. Um, or if you do uh, have a play around and um, have a question while you're playing around, you can always ask us in the next following uh, Zoom, uh, and I'll be, I'll be more than happy to explain them. Okay, so... Um, there you go, pre-infusion, um, what you can change, what, what you, uh, if you change what you should be aware of, and uh, points on the graph that uh, help you identify if pre-infusion could have been better. Okay, awesome. Uh, thanks for the right, uh, someone, yeah. Doc says he's happy, very informative. Um, are we still chasing uh, another shot, or are we, um, are I we can wrapping do. up? I can do, but um, I could do an opposite shot, let's say, if I wanted to improve this further, uh, but I wanted to keep the high flow rate, we could do that. Okay, let's have a look inside here. Okay, so I've got the high flow rate, but I've got the seconds, okay. So let's put this back to, so it was four. I think if we had an extra two seconds, uh, keep that flow rate, we could quite possibly get a, a much better extraction. Um, so this is a lot more water than we need. So maybe I will put that down half. So I get a little bit less water and we'll see how we go. Let's put it down a little bit more, 607. It's about about right. Okay. Okay. So just bear me one more second while I prepare this and then I think it's quite cool how we've uh, discovered that, you know, if you play around with it and then you can also work out like backwards what the original setting was. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Cool find for me, actually. I didn't expect that. <laughs> okay.
Okay. I've lost count of which shot this is. <laughs> oh, okay. I've just got to add some water. So the D1 will tell you when you're running out of water. Oh. Bear me a second while I just empty my uh, drip tray at the same time. Should take me about a minute. <laughs> I think you're probably on shot number six now. Mm-hmm. Maybe seven. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's like uh, when uh, Brees is trained for championships, it's like this. Just constant shots. <laughs> Taste tasty. Okay. So, um, what have we changed again? Recap reminder. Uh, so we just changed it to six seconds and I've reduced the flow by one ml. Um, so it's actually roughly the same, but the time is a little bit longer, okay? So we should, in theory, see the uh, volume in cup uh, align much closer to the period after the rise and hold stage. And as I previously discussed, um, it should lead to a better a, a tasting extraction. Okay. All right. In the meantime, if you guys have any final questions, uh, so we can line them up uh, before we wrap this thing up. So just uh, let us know uh, via chat or just raise your hand if you want to uh, grab the mic. So I am very happy with this shot. Um, so just go over the basics. The pressure came in, the rise and hold. We reached the pressure right at the tip of the end of the rise and hold. Um, MLs was all the way above uh, one ML from the start. Okay, and the temperature was super stable. So if we zoom in. Okay, so we can see the pressure was uh, reached at the end of the rise and hold phase, and we actually had a drip just before the exiting of the rise and hold phase. Okay, so pre infusion actually ended um, at the perfect spot, pretty much. Okay, we could have had it a little bit later by one second, but that's one second. Um, in terms of chasing that, it will be very difficult to chase, but you could potentially do it if you adjusted the flows uh, in mls um, or maybe if we could do it by half a second but again it's it's we're chasing very minute details now but what is important to note is these two lines the flow and the volume in cup aligned in less than less than two seconds i would say let's say less than three seconds um, and that is very very good Actually, if that's two and a half, so that's so less than three seconds, yeah. Safely say three. And we can see it tracked all the way over here, and then just a little bit here as we lost a little bit of uh, pressure, uh, most likely due to the put resistance really sort of waning in that point. And uh, yeah, so this is a very good shot. And um, is well without tasting you could say this graph is slightly better than the default setting um, but in tasting let's have a taste now let's have a smell so the smell is very clean I can smell um, almond milk which is uh, very unusual usually I smell almond skin mm. okay the taste is very nice um, but what I immediately notice is the body is very thin. Okay, now I don't know whether that is due to the flow rate being constantly above one. Okay, 
Um, but compared to the other shots where the, all the shots were below one, um, the body is much thinner. Okay. Um, now that's not a bad thing in terms of what I um, like about this shot because the shot is so nice and clean. Um, the aftertaste is warming um, and yeah. So before even trying it and just looking at the graph, I could already tell that this would have been a tasty shot. And, and I'm not I'm not sort of telling white lies here. I'm just saying it for the camera. I actually really do enjoy this shot. Um, but you know, we've aligned these two um, um, parameters, and that is the main thing. And um, we've identified that we could uh, have it cut a little bit earlier. But this flavor in this cup, we don't need to. And the profile stopped it at the weight of 36 came out as 39, well, taking a sip, so it was about 40. So um, that ratio was as far as I would like to take it. Um, a lot of the other shots coming out at this ratio was a lot more earthier and, and a lot more muddy, definitely not as clean as this. So, um, so we can say that if you do match your pre-infusion uh, with your preset and your bean and your grind setting, um, you will find that your coffee will be a lot cleaner and um, a lot more enjoyable. Okay, there we go. Um, where where this may be really useful oh, is... That last one then. Sorry, say that again? I said, glad you pulled that last one then. Yeah, I know, right? Um, yeah, so um, what I'd like to end it on is, um, I guess we could say... If you have um, darker roasted beans or uh, beans of lesser quality, uh, pre-infusion will help you in uh, getting a cleaner shot for sure. Uh, and at the very least, it will be much sweeter. Okay, so there we have it. I'm glad we pulled that last shot. And yeah, um, yeah. so a lot of information here today. Uh, but we will cut this up into uh, shorter videos for you guys. Um, but for all your completionists, um, the full Zoom will be available to you as well. Uh, we'll screenshot some of those uh, graphs in there so it's easier to view. Um, and yeah, uh, thank you very much for everyone joining. Thank you very much, Mohammed, for hosting as well. You've been much help with all the questions yeah. today. We had quite a few. For yeah. Um, thanks, Doc J, for the questions. They were very useful and. Uh, Thanks, Paul, as usual, uh, for your patience and all the information. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next Sunday. Yep. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Cheers. Bye. Bye-bye.